Hi everyone, Sarah here. Jamie and I are looking forward to bringing you more interviews, tips, and lessons learned in 2023. We'd like to hear your thoughts about the podcast, so we set up a survey. Go to wishidknownforwriters.com slash survey. It's short and it shouldn't take more than a minute or two max. Your answers will help shape the podcast. Tell us what you think at wishidknownforwriters.com slash survey. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Men podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Men podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Jennifer Hilt. Yes, we do. About and tropes. Yes, it's such a fun interview, y'all. It's really good. Yeah, uh, I met Jennifer at Twenty Books, and she writes the trope thesaurus. Um, and then she has uh, the trope thesaurus horror, and she's doing trope thesaurus romance on Kickstarter. So we talk about tropes and we talk about yeah. Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. That seems to be a theme these days. Yeah. And uh, so it was really great. It was a yes. great interview. Yes. Yeah. And so we asked her, you know, all the regular questions about mm-hmm. what she wishes she had known. And she had mm-hmm. some just, we had a really good discussion. We and, did. Yeah. yeah. And we really dive into uh, tropes at the end. We talk about mm-hmm. like how to spot them and mm-hmm. how to do twist on tropes. And, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah, it makes yeah. me want to go like watch some movies and I know, and I know, and start picking stoking. them out. Yeah, I really feel like if you watch, you know, if you've got a book or a show and mm-hmm. you're just like, I, why am I so drawn mm-hmm. to this show or this book? If you go in and dive in about the tropes, that you'll figure out why. You'll yeah. figure out why real fast. So yeah, yeah. that's really good. And you, and you mentioned um, Will Trent. In Will the Trent. And yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure that's based on a book series. I think um, from it Karen is Karen Slaughter, I think. Is, is it? Different? I think so. Oh, yeah. I didn't so, know that. I guess I you missed may have that. To go look for those books. Oh my gosh, y'all. I love it so much. <laughs> and it's got lots of tropes in it. But uh, yeah, so that's great. I'll have to uh, look at that when I yeah. when we get off here. Because yeah. I do love that show. So yeah. yeah. All right. So should we talk about subscribers? We have a couple yes, of Yes, let's talk about subscribers. You guys are making our day. Yes, we're just so so happy that mm-hmm. that you're willing to support us. We're just thrilled. Yeah. So, yeah. so we've got some new subscribers this week. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Melissa Storm, and she yes. chose the um, unicorn emoji. Yes. I would and, say Melissa is a unicorn. She's got about <laughs> thirty eight pin names. I think I don't know how many she has, but she and does then, a lot of stuff. She's just yes. a really cool person. Yes. And then um, Victoria Tate and Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Victoria Tate. And she chose the book stack emoji and she's Mm -hmm. been on the podcast before. She was one of our new author interviews. Yes, she was. And we have Kate's Kate Sharon Swed. Sharon Swed. I'm sorry, Kate. She's she's got the fire. You can burn me alive if I misspelled your name. And then we have Angel Lawson. She's um a pal that we I met at 20 books y'all she's such a cool person we've got to get her on the podcast and we had and she ch- chose the heart and then we have KP Turner who chose the puppy and I love that yes so thanks everybody for yes subscribing and um a lot of people have also filled out the survey um, mm-hmm. and it's got such good feedback in it. I'm just so excited. It's got like yeah. ideas for guests and topics, and we just really appreciate just yeah. the feedback and the support. So we do, we do, yeah. we do. Yeah. yeah. So what's been going on with you? Well, um, we've had big news in our family this week. Um, oh. our youngest has got a full-time job. He's- <laughs> Yes, we're so happy. So, and you know, I was thinking, it's not about, like he hasn't been working a lot anyway. Yeah, he's been working and going yes. to school and stuff. Yes. But I was thinking about it like my writing has been, I've been able to help our kids like get yeah. to school. And so, mm-hmm. like, you know, you talked about how, how grateful you are for yeah. the, the job. And yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. I'm like looking yeah. back now, I'm like, now our kids can start out 
it choked up. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I love that. Yeah. They can start up debt free. Yeah. Plus, yeah. So anyway. I, I love y'all Sarah. <laughs> She's crying. I love it. <laughs> I know. I don't blame you. That's a huge thing. And the, I'm sure I know your kids are grateful and uh appreciate it too. Yeah. So I think that's great. So, Anything else? Anyway. Um, still writing, still mm-hmm. working on the book. You know yeah, how it yeah. goes. It's like yeah. well, chapter the, 20. The slog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So working on that and um just like just doing um admin. I started thinking about taxes. I've got to do some Oof. tax stuff. Yes, I know. Not super excited about that. Um right. but yeah, that's like all been going on here and yeah. um just grateful that I can do it and that it's you know. Mm-hmm let us help our kids out and give them a yeah. good start. And yeah, that's so. awesome. That's anyway. just great. Yeah. What about you? Well, uh, I don't think I mentioned that uh, at the end of January, 1st of February, my husband was laid off uh, nope. from his job of 30 years. Uh, so, you know, not, not only we've had a few things going on, but I mean, the good news is he, it was a kind of a massive layoff uh, that they did or not a massive, but a big one. And, but he got a job the next week. So that's great uh, with another company that, and we're real happy about it. But um, so that's kind of been going on and he doesn't start until March 1st. So, but, you know, just kind of, we're having to fill out paperwork and do all this stuff. So that was kind of a big deal Um, on top of the other big deals we've got going on in our, Live. <laughs> so uh you know i mean what is it de- a death a change of jobs yeah. and we may be moving and you know so it's like <laughs> i know and like who gave me such a hard time for moving last year yeah yeah i know i know i know um <laughs> and um uh, yeah so my things are a bit of a poop show around here and uh so <laughs> it's kind of crazy i've been at my mom's for the past few days and um um uh, no, I'm at my daughter's there my daughter and son-in-law and some friends of theirs are on vac- they've gone to Paris for a week. So nice. the other grandmother and I, Lala, and I'm Coco, or we're keeping the kids and the kids call it Loco Camp. Uh <laughs> when we're here. I I don't know that they're loco, but we are by the time it's over. No, kidding. They're adorable and they're so fun. I asked my, I was talking to my four-year-old grandchildren yesterday and I said, I asked, I said something about what time is something? And my granddaughter said, we don't know. We're kids. I was like, (laughs) it's your department. Yeah. (laughs) Somebody's got to be in charge. So uh, yeah, the, the, it's so that's what I'm doing. Um, I think the biggest thing for me this week is, you know, I was doing really well. And, you know, I still think on the whole, I'm doing pretty well, but, um, you know, writing has just been really hard. And, Mm -hmm. and even though I have the story and I, I am kind of, you know, excited about it. It's just, it's just hard focusing on that. And I've been real worried that I was lazy. Um, I, I'm just gonna be honest. I've just been really worried that I've been, I, that I was lazy, but a friend of mine who lost her husband a year and a half ago or something like that, two years ago, she was like, Jamie, like four months is mm-hmm. like a minute. It's a mm-hmm. minute in grief and you're not lazy. You're just suffering and you have mm-hmm. to kind of write it out. And when you can write, you need to write. And when you can't write, you need to just be okay with that. And so I am going to do that and I'm going to, you know, uh, contribute to the writing community through the podcast. And uh, I saw, I found a text that my sister had sent all of us. Um, I don't know when it was probably a year ago um, that I had saved and, and it, she just was talking about how, you know, it's just kind of unbelievable that I'm, healthy and I, I've never smoked and I have lung cancer and everything, but that I can't control what happens, but I can control how I react to it. And mm-hmm. um, I've said that before, but it just reinforced, you know, some things. And um, 
So, yeah, I mean, if you're struggling, just know you're not totally alone. I'm fine. Dri- I'm driving that struggle bus, so we're, <laughs> we'll have we'll have an okay time. And uh, <laughs> but well. yeah, so that's that's it. That's it for me. Uh, you know, I just appreciate everybody's encouragement. I appreciate. I mean, I'm still getting emails from people just saying they hear the podcast and that mm-hmm. they're you know encouraging me, and uh, I really appreciate it. And um, <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I just hope you guys stay with us and stay with me and don't give up. And uh, oh yeah. So yeah, no, I think you are doing fine. And I mean, I think four months is such a short amount of time. And I I mean, you, and you can talk about your sister and like, I get choked up talking about like Um, my kids and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you're doing so good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that, or I'm just in denial. I don't know. Um, no, you are doing fine, and you. I mean, you've had you've been through a traumatic event, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. it's not going to go away in a couple of uh-uh. weeks or months. Uh-uh. I mean, yeah. so I don't think it'll ever go away. No, I, mean, I, I mean, just I think, I think you're, it will change. Myself to that. Yeah, it will change. It will change. I heard somebody say one time that it's like the black hole that you're living in now. It eventually just becomes the thing that doesn't suck you in all the time, but it's still, yeah. there. it's still small. It's smaller, but it's still there. So yeah. um, when I'm at home away from everyone, it's a little easier to manage when I'm with everyone. It's a little harder, I think, because, you know, I just see how everyone More reminders. Is, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, she was at my mom's until yeah. she died and that was hard. You know, that's hard being there, but I don't want to be anywhere else. And we would have never, you know, I mean, we, that's where we wanted her. We all wanted to take care of her Mm -hmm. and would have taken care of her for the rest. I mean, forever. Um, Mm -hmm. But she didn't want that. And so, y'all, I don't know. I I just keep talking about it. (laughs) Eventually I will have other things to talk about. Just trust me. Let's go to Jennifer because she's got great things to say. Yes. All right. So here is Jennifer Hilt. Yeah. Well, today we are really excited to talk to Jennifer Hilt. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Hi, great to see you guys. You too. You too. Jennifer and I met at 20 Books in uh, November, so it's good to see you again. Yes, outside of Vegas. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Where the whole world meets is in Vegas, all the author world. Yeah, exactly. Crossroads. (laughs) Well, let me read your bio and we'll get started. Jennifer Hilt is the USA Today bestselling author of the trope thesaurus and over 25 romances across four genres. She loves talking about storytelling craft, tropes, and happily and happily ever afters. Jennifer lives in Seattle with her family and she's always plotting an escape to the sunshine. Yeah. Which is where <laughs> you're at now, right? <laughs> yeah. Can't say I blame you. Uh, so tell us, how'd you get into writing? Um Started out reading tons as a kid and Mm -hmm. thinking, oh, yeah, I can do that. Then when I actually started writing stories, I realized how hard it was. Uh, (laughs) So I set that aside um, for a while and just kept reading and reading. And then um, in my 20s, I went back to it and was like, just felt like this need to 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 do that. And so, um, again, I realized how hard it was. Mm But um, this time I was able just like, it's funny, people say, like, how do you know you want to be a writer or or how do you be a writer? And I feel like it's like a compulsion. (laughs) And I feel like if you don't have that compulsion, you're lucky and that's good. Enjoy life, you know. (laughs) It's like that quote. It's like some people say they want to write a book and they say, you know, take two aspirin and hopefully it'll pass or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because once you're once you're sucked into the writing world, then like if you really love it, then you're 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 a goner, right? (laughs) Exactly. Because the good days or the good times or those good periods where you get like this kind of flow going are so, so good Mm -hmm. that you're like always chasing to get back to that, even though, you know. It's it's a, at least I find it's a smaller part of the process than I would yeah. have thought way yeah. long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what is your definition of success? That's a great question. Um, I think about that all the time. I think it has changed over time. Right. At first, I just wanted to be published, and then um, l- l- lately, I feel like it's just really important to connect with people, and mm-hmm. I feel like 
that's the thing that's been meaningful for me is just being able to have conversations with other authors and understand what they're going through and help me with my thing. And so I really feel like the community part has been a lot bigger um, definition of, of how I, I feel. Yeah. Military process, you know, of writing, but yet it's like really important to feel this like connection to other people. So mm -hmm. I think for me, I've really come to appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important too. I mean, you know, of course, I'm an extrovert. So I do, I do find that very important, but um, it does change over time. We talk to people all the time and that's what they say that our definition of success changes over time. So I think yeah. that's so interesting. So what do you wish you'd known about writing and craft when you started? Oh, um, I think, honestly, I wish I'd known how important marketing was. Mm. I did not at all get that. Um, and I was doing this for a really long time, even before like the whole indie explosion. And so at that time it was like, oh, you just find an agent and they get you an editor and you just write books and they put your books out and then you just, mm -hmm. that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, is not a reality anymore. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I don't even know how much of a reality it used to be, but that was definitely the dream mm -hmm. um, at that one time. And I think now, I think I just didn't understand. It took me a long time to understand you really need to have a marketing plan, not just like, oh, I'm done with my book and here it is, but mm -hmm. like built into the thing that you're working on. Mm -hmm. And it's not a thing you can stop and start and stop and start. Mm -hmm. And um, just that is, and it's going to take up a lot of your time and energy. Mm -hmm. Those are all yeah. things that were like, oh, that's news to me, you know, or mm -hmm. you can't escape. <laughs> Yeah. So, so can you expand on that built into yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. Like, like yeah. for our listeners, what are you, what are for you talking sure. about? Yeah. I think it's um like whatever genre you're writing in, it's really great to be connected with what else is the other authors that are happening in that genre. Mm -hmm. And um, just to, like, you know, different, there's different kind of like reader groups mm -hmm. and just to like know not only what people are reading, but like, why, you know, why mm -hmm. is this important? And, or mm -hmm. why is everybody talking about this? And, and it really helps you like build connections too, because, you know, talking with other readers, then they're like interested in what you're writing. And so I think instead of just kind of being more isolated, getting book done and then thinking, oh, I'm going to launch to try to like build that in as you go. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't have to just be like an all or nothing. It's okay to take these like little steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I think when people hear marketing, they think ads. Right. And there's right. so many people that right now are not in a position to run ads or they don't think this is a good time to run ads. But the fact is, and we we talk about how when we say Becca sign, people take a drink. Well, <laughs> we, they can take a drink when we say genre expectations too, because that is part of being in those groups, right. in the, in the uh, community of mm -hmm. readers and writers of what you're writing and right. you know that. And so you're building that, yeah, those relationships and you're meeting those expectations, you're knowing those expectations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then meeting them as you're writing. And I, I just think that's so important. And people don't really, I think new authors don't really understand that. I think you're exactly right. They don't mm -hmm. understand how important that is. Yeah. And um, I don't, I'm not like running a commercial for book funnel, but yes. I have found that's a really great way yeah. that if you're a newer author, you're putting a book, um, you know, you put like, a, you know, some sort of freebie, whether it's mm -hmm. a newer, you know, some like a short story or, or something, but then you can start to join with other authors mm -hmm. and start to build your list and people who are interested in your work before you even have your stuff come out. And it's really nice mm -hmm. to like have that started and have not only the reader connections, but with the other authors. So I think that's something that also I didn't really understand before mm -hmm. that I would really like, now I would be like, definitely do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. at the very start of your career. Yeah. yeah. Because I think, you know, I mean, I've said this before, but if if there's any reason that my books did well from the beginning, it is because I got them in front of the exactly right readers by mm -hmm. building that email list beforehand, but also doing those newsletter swaps so people who wrote 
similarly to me. Mm-hmm. And those readers were my readers. I mean, they didn't know it, right. yet, but they were. And right. so, and I think that that is just so important. And I think it's really overlooked. And I think people go, mm-hmm. oh, newsletter swaps don't work yeah. anymore. That's absolutely not true. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's one of the ways you can build those communities, you know, right. And, right. and make those connections. Yeah. Right. And it's not big um, advertising dollars like Facebook. No, ads. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's, really, I think it's very it's doable for, mm-hmm. for almost any author. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. And I think I think you're right, though. I think that people get overwhelmed by the word marketing mm-hmm. and they just kind of shut down. But there are little things you can do along the way that mm-hmm. make that form a marketing picture basically. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think that new, I think that's just important for new authors to hear. And I think it's important for more established authors to hear who haven't really done that. Yeah. And yeah. There's no so way to get out a, of it. <laughs> no. And I think it's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, what about um, writing romance? Is there anything you wish you knew about writing romance? I wish I, I think I wish I'd known before um, the genre expectations mm-hmm. in terms of uh, that. That's really the most important thing of like whatever right. sub subgenre you're doing. Like yes, you need the happily ever after, but really knowing okay, paranormal is going to have you know creatures, but not like too weird stuff that would be more like fantasy. Like really just being able to to slot that in your mind will yeah. help you connect with other readers. Um, I think in the beginning, I I would have a tendency um, to write these like kind of big stories with everything thrown in, which is great. And there's a time and a place for that. But if you're trying to get a series going or something like that, it's really helpful if it's a more discreet idea mm-hmm. and it's not something that's like crosses, you know, three genre, three subgenres. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it's hard in the beginning, isn't it? It's hard to kind of narrow that down. Exactly. Even if you read a lot in those genres, I mean, you know, it's still hard, but right. I think you're right. I think that's super important. Well, what assumptions? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, please. I was just going to say, I don't. Um, so there's some books that I, I have that I haven't published that were that are ones that are like that, that I just mm-hmm. kind of, you know, it's a YA and I've got fantasy and I threw some like kind of horror elements in it. And but I'm not sorry that I wrote them because I like learned about writing while yes. doing it. And the yes. things that I learned with that, I later applied. So I don't feel like I hope people don't feel like oh every time they sit down they're like I have to write this very tight marketable publishable book because sometimes you just need to work out an idea Mm -hmm. and you need to like move forward you're not sure how but you have this like sense and so it's okay to follow that like gut instinct and uh, and honor that and so that was just that's just like You know, I have a friend who she's been writing for a long, long time, and um, she kind of did the same thing. You know, she sort of, you know, her first books were not um, as tropey as, um, you know, she felt like they should have been and stuff. But she's not sad she wrote those books. She published them, and they actually they've done okay, and she's figured out a way to to market them and make them sell better by making them like small town romances, you know, marketing them as small town romances. But now when she writes, she Mm -hmm. really doesn't start writing until she's got that trope, you know, that really tropey hook Mm -hmm. uh, that she can build on. So Mm -hmm. I do think it's something you learn over time. I mean, if you can start off that way, great. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, it's okay to learn and build. And you can kind of always go back and tweak things just enough, either with marketing or just slight revisions Mm -hmm. or titles or something like that, or even covers that you can, um, you know, and you can make things more marketable. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anything is ever wasted, even if no, it's me like. Either. I, and I just love and that I you hate, said that. Yeah, yeah, I hate it when I write stuff and I have to delete it, or I, I don't ever actually delete it. I save it. I put it in I another folder. It, but, yeah. <laughs> but you know, even that is not wasted because it's a learning. Right. We're learning, and and like you said, we're sometimes it's the gut instinct. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's the gut instinct that um, we just have to get through it and mm-hmm. figure out what's wrong with it and then keep going. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So what assumptions did you make at the beginning of your writing career? And looking back, did they turn out to be right or wrong? I think at the beginning, I assumed um, I would just sit down and and write one thing and I would just keep doing that. And I think that there's a lot of people can have a lot of success in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I discovered, sadly, that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That after about four or five books in one genre, I was like, whoo, I need a break. And so I like want to pick up, then I'd like pick up another genre, Mm -hmm. and which was super interesting. And I learned a lot, but very time consuming from, you know, kind of the readers, reader marketing standpoint, because then you're trying to like ask them to follow you Mm -hmm. across things that are very different than probably what they're used to. And I didn't understand, or I was very naive in assuming how hard that would be. Mm -hmm. Um, both on me and them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Did you have any that followed you across or was it just not what you had hoped or expected? Um, I did. It's just, um, I guess I just thought in the beginning, you know, um, because like, like very, like, I'll, for example, like most famous, um, like uh, J.K. Rowling, right? So she wrote Harry mm-hmm. Potter, everybody loved all her stuff. And then she started writing the mystery series, the Galbraith um, mm-hmm. one. And I, I really liked those a lot too. Um, but I think in general that, ex, like, I think I, I thought, oh, people would do that for my stuff. And I just, you know, a small number did, but not like, like, you know, these super famous authors that have huge groups of people that just, whatever you write, I'm going to buy it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that yeah. was the biggest thing to learn. And then you, but it's not that you don't, you do find new, new people in those. Mm-hmm. New mm-hmm. um, and that's really cool too. It's just. You're having to build. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And everything is like, um, probably also because I'm, you know, getting older and more experienced in life. I'm realizing almost pretty much everything is about time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and what are you going to do with time? You know, mm-hmm. you can, um, and I didn't, I certainly did not understand that when I first started out, you know, 20 some years ago, I, cause I right. had all the time and energy in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it just dispensates, doesn't it? And then, you know, and then it gets <laughs> just sucked out of you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and then you become like, you know, I feel like now I'm like guarding it, you know? Yes. Yeah. And, yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. You know, or before I was like, ah, giving it away, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. um, now what do you, what do you focus on now for your writing? Are you focusing on a certain genre or do you still kind of bounce around a little bit? Uh, I, truth to be told, I always have these like secret little projects and those are my little bounce arounds, but the working on this whole trope, the source, uh, series has taken the bulk of my time and energy, but my brother and I are co-writing, um, a mystery series. Oh, and cool. So, yeah. So that's like, it's the trope, the Sora stuff, and then the mystery series. And then every once in a while I sneak away and work on, um, these other little things that I, mm-hmm. that I just kind of, you know, feel compelled. Yeah. To work on, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, that is great. So, yeah. I want to hear more about the mystery stuff when that comes yeah. out. So you'll have to let yeah. us know on that. Yeah. And yeah, we're going to have to come on. Yeah. Oh, cool. And we're going to talk about the trope thesaurus here in a little bit. So, but first, before we get to that, um, we always want to ask about like mistakes and lessons learned. So what's the most important lesson that you've learned? Oh, that's a good question. I think, ah, you know, I was just thinking about this. I really think be yourself and it sounds mm. like trite and silly, but I think for a long time, I tried to write like other people. Um, Mm -hmm. or like, oh, this person, okay, I like this writer and I really like her stuff and I'm going to do stuff like that. And, um, I think this, but like going back to like the essence of who you are with like your voice and how you tell a story and how you even view the world, like that's the really special thing that each of us Mm -hmm. has. And it's a, it's a universal thing. You can use that to connect with other people. So I feel like that's really the most important thing I wish I knew and that I, I really try to like honor that now. Mm -hmm. Um, and not to be afraid of being like too weird or too different, or nobody's going to want to hear that kind of thing Mm -hmm. to push that down and, and let, you know, my voice come out. And I, I really hope that other newer authors, um, do that sooner (laughs) 
mm-hmm. in their, their career yeah. than, than I would have done. Yeah. It's that. those things that we're kind of afraid to let people know sometimes that are the things that differentiate us yeah. and that, that pull people to us. Yeah. It's, it's so funny that that's, <clears throat> and it does take a while, I think, to figure out that it's okay to do that yeah. for some of us. Some other people are not quite so. Yeah, they may not want to know all my stuff, but yeah. <laughs> I can let a little of the freak flag, freak flag fly. Ooh, gosh, that's a mouthful. Don't say that three times fast. Uh, so what's the biggest change you've had to make in your thinking? Thinking, I think, is really trying to, think um or to plan series wise mm-hmm. and not just like hop from thing to thing to thing um mm-hmm. like I was thinking okay I'll do this trope the source book and then I'll go work on this mystery series and then that kind of the the trope the source like has evolved and mm-hmm. so then I have to like okay so that's going to be more of a longer project so I have to like second s- secondarily slot in this other thing mm-hmm. so I think um, in a way it's to be more flexible, mm-hmm. but always keep working. Cause it's like, I think some things that I have seen over the years are, are, um, people who plan a lot, but don't execute so much. Mm-hmm. And it is still important to still be writing and working and not to plan yourself, spend all your time planning and you're not <laughs> moving forward. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. It's like everyone who buys the uh, the journals and the calendars at the beginning of the year and we plan everything. I've done this. You, yes. I plan like a huge marketing thing. Okay, and this month I'm going to do this and this month. I'm, and then I don't ever look at it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the whole planning talk, like I hear the words you're saying, I just don't understand them. <laughs> yes. Which is yeah. sad. Sad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, um, so getting back to her questions, um, if you were going to start over today, would you do anything differently? You mentioned like book funnel and like kind of mm-hmm, building a mm-hmm. reader base. So that's a great thing. Is there anything else that you would recommend absolutely. like new authors? I would absolutely do a series. Okay. Yeah. And I would buy a series. I would, um, uh, because we're just basically all just talking like romance and, mm-hmm. and even actually mystery. I would do a five book series. Um, and that's actually what my brother and I are working on. Um, and I would, and I'm, tr- would want to have, at least for me, I want the majority of them done before I come out. Um, mm-hmm. because not, it doesn't have to be fast release, but it's just life happens. And so mm-hmm. I don't want to have to be like, oh, I have a book coming out in two months and I'm still, you know, yep percent through the first draft because as you ladies know i'm sure um that sucks <laughs> it does indeed it does, it does. it's yeah. awful when you have readers hungry for mm. the next book or next yeah. two books and you're they're like they're still in my head I'm sorry <laughs> yeah i just had somebody message me the other day and like when is the next um you know the next book in this small town royalty series coming out which right now i don't have a plan to write i mean i will write it but That's not next. And I mean, I just had to go, well, (laughs) I've got some good ideas, but um, mm, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely I do series and I try to really have, um, you know, several of them done to a point where I feel like I have a good sense of what's going to happen. Yeah. So that I'm not like on on book three and like, oh, I really wished I'd done that in book one, you know, that kind of thing. And then um, also, I'm, this is, I think everybody pretty much knows this, but to have the follow through with like characters to keep it, Mm -hmm. um, you know, keep the readers like engaged in that way, because it's just, it's just so important. So those, I think now, especially with series being so popular and kind of the way publishing works, that it really, that's pretty much how you have to go. And I think it's like, oh, if I just write this one good book and it's like, that's, you can do that from like a personal growth standpoint, but if you want to like sell books, Mm -hmm. you need to have more than that. Right. So when you're saying a series, are you talking about having the same protagonist or same hero and heroine in all five books? Or are you talking about like standalones in a series? Like standalones in a series. I'm I'm more thinking of like, oh, like small town or Mm -hmm. like a mystery. I mean, it could be like, you know, a mystery with the same um, protagonist, but a different, you know. Yeah. Uh murder mysteries in each but like there's a general cast of characters that you've introduced in a place and people want to be in that place they want to escape 
to that place. The and place that, becomes a character almost. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And a mm-hmm. huge draw. And I mean, I think that's true for any genre because I've read like science fiction stuff that I've loved because I just want to be in that place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. think that's really important and not to, um, not to underestimate the power of that. Yeah. 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 Cause people want to go back, like you said, to that place, to those people, to that atmosphere that you create. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And life is, you know, hard, mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that everybody's always dealing with. And so if there's an escape that readers have that can give them a break from all the, you know, tough stuff, then they're going to go to that place. Mm-hmm. You know, at least I'm going <laughs> to. And one of the benefits of, um, you know, you were saying having most of them written, you were saying how you wish you had like thinking in book three that you had done something different. You know, that is a huge advantage to waiting Mm -hmm. until you have most of the books written because, Mm -hmm. and it, it, you're right. It doesn't have to be a rapid release sort of thing. It just gives you flexibility in your planning, flexibility Mm -hmm. in your editing. And so Mm -hmm. that is, that's a great point about mm-hmm. waiting to um, to release until you have more written. And I, I don't think that, um, I think I, I also underestimated earlier in um, my career, you don't have to rush. I feel like, um, you know, in general, life is so busy and, and things like that. And I think it really, if you take the time to get a, a product, a series, a thing that you're excited about, you believe in that's well well done and that you can move forward with, that time is well spent. Mm-hmm. as opposed mm-hmm. to just kind of like rushing in something because I have to get it out. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's just, a, that's hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then you were talking about time too. You know, I mean, we have these time constraints and we, you know, we get to a certain age and we're thinking, yeah. man, how many good years do I have <laughs> left? And, you, <laughs> you know, yeah. and so, yeah, I mean, it's hard, but I think you're right. I think you're right. And speaking of, time the neighbors have decided to just pretty much overhaul their house it seems like <laughs> so there's all this hear. noise outside okay uh, i can't we can't hear it at all okay, good, good, okay. Good, 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 good. Yeah. all right let's ch- let's switch gears a little bit and talk about tropes so how yeah. do you work tropes into your fiction um i think the biggest thing that i realized was that uh tropes are building blo- blocks and why they're building blocks is because they're really relationships mm-hmm. and um, I think when I realized that I could like, all of a sudden it's like taking these like blinders off and you could see them everywhere, like in mm. movies and TV mm-hmm, series. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what, what really people get hooked into. Um, even something like, um, oh, I didn't, I wasn't watching it, but I was hearing about it from my family, the Mandalorian when it mm-hmm. came out. Mm-hmm. And um, it was interesting what my husband and teenage sons were talking about were the relationships. And mm-hmm. it's like the science, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. fantasy science fiction thing. And so that was like also getting like, yeah, you know, thinking about that. Mm-hmm. So um, I think they're really important and that if other authors can like take the time to to, to like mine the, the gold that's there, it's mm-hmm. just another way to like really hook the readers into what's happening. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really, you know, a, a resource that everybody could be utilizing more. And it's not even just in romance. I mean, there, it's in everything. It's everything. In, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. in everything. Yeah. I think yeah. that, I think oh, I that, don't write tropes. And it's like, uh, yeah, you do. Yeah. You just yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think the tropes in romance are really easy to spot a lot of them. But mm-hmm. um, so give us some examples for people that are like going, I don't understand how the trope, like, because a lot of people think trope, like not, not relationship. So give us some examples of those. Um, well, like, like a, a really common one um, would be like the orphan. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And like um, the most common, exa- or m- not the most common, but the most popular example would be like Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that like she just used orphan and she used, you know, literally he had a scar like mm-hmm. the, on his <laughs> on his Like face. a literal scar. Yeah, <laughs> yes, a literal scar. And, you know, secrets. And like, I, I feel like that's a really great example, even though it's not romance, if you're just like new to the trope idea, Mm -hmm. um, because everybody is familiar with those books and stories, even if you didn't watch them, just because it's like in our culture. And um, 
she just used a ton of those tropes, but she made them very specific to that world. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think that combination is what Mm -hmm. like just blew everybody away. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping to advocate people do more is Mm -hmm. take those tropes and then make them fit their specific worlds. Um, In terms of, um, I guess, um, because tropes is such a big term, I started in my mind to like think of, okay, instead of having this big alphabetical list, what are some categories I I can put them in? And that helps me think about how to use them in the story. So like the person ones were the ones like we just mentioned with like uh, orphan or boss or billionaire or virgin, or there's some like personality characteristic that they have. And then there's all, there's the whole category of um, relationship tropes. So you got like mm-hmm. enemies to lovers or friends mm-hmm. to lovers, boy next door, mm-hmm. unrequited love, faded mates, all those. So that's like another category. And then um, what was the third one I was thinking of? Um, now my brain is just. I think I listened to your interview with Joanna Penn. Was it objects? Could have been. I've been reorganizing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think the other th- the other kind of um, thing that I've been thinking about, though, is the whole and really feel like it belongs almost in its own category is like the whole idea of secrets and no. um, how that is just such a huge, important like there's no story. I really feel that cannot be benefited by having secrets worked Mm -hmm. into it, you know, Mm -hmm. and it could be like a huge secret. It could be that it could be like a little, but it's just like enriches the character um, so much. So I just feel like that's like a a secret sauce that maybe uh, we don't use as much as we could. Right. Well, you know, there's this new show. It's on ABC, but you can watch it on Hulu. It's called Will Trent. And I love this show. And I was like, why do I love this show so much? And um, I was I was telling my mom about it. So she oh. and I, I was I've been with my mom, and so I watched the episodes again with her, and mm-hmm. I realized what it was. And it's the he's an orphan. Mm-hmm. He grew up in the sis. I mean, you know, in a in an orphan home. Mm-hmm. Uh, he um, is now a detective. So it's not a. Ro- I mean, there is romance in it, but but he's a detective, and so he. He has a secret, he, Mm -hmm. a big secret that he wants nobody to know about. So he does all of these things to cover up this secret. I mean, it is so compelling. You like him so much, Mm -hmm. almost from the first 15 minutes of the show. Like Mm -hmm. you're completely involved, invested and rooting for him. And it is all of that. It's Mm -hmm. the wound, the, Mm -hmm. the secret, Mm -hmm. everything. And so I think it's a great example of using tropes like that in something other than romance. So if somebody wanted to watch that, they could watch it and sort of get an idea. But um, yeah, as you're saying that I'm like, Oh, Yes, that's exactly what it is. But I am so, it's so compelling to me Mm -hmm, and entertaining because you're rooting for him the entire time. And so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think um, with romance, sometimes we get so fixated on their relationship. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember they're separate people. Mm -hmm. And um, the more we can develop their characters, their personalities, all the, like all of us have so many edges to us, you know, Mm -hmm. and the more we can do that, the more we create like little um, hooks for the readers to get into Mm -hmm. for the characters. And and it creates, you know, great, more potential for conflict between the two of them as that relationship moves along. Mm -hmm. If you kind of have, you know, more generic bland characters, which is what I think people originally think of when they hear of trope, Mm-hmm. then um, it's like, eh, it's not a lot going on, but you can use them to create tons of conflict, like what you're talking about with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It creates all kinds of conflict, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. with he and coworkers, he and yeah. love interest, he, yeah, yeah, his love interest in her coworkers. Yeah. It's everything, <laughs> but it's also a little bit of a comedic break too mm-hmm. in some of the situations. Yeah. And I mean, you can just, you can use them in so many different ways and it doesn't have to be romance. And I think that that's what people don't really get sometimes. Right. And they don't have to be um, the other thing, like when I work with romance writers and we're talking about plotting and stuff is like, we don't have to come out and I prefer if we wouldn't um, on the first page and be like, 
here's like Mary and, you know, she's a blank, blank and blank. Um, you know, it's okay to like midpoint in the story, we find out something else about her. That's, yeah. yes. that's fine. That's yes. great. That's, yes. that's great. you know, so it's not like we just have to like throw them um, at the reader. We want to like, almost like tease them a little bit yes. or place them. Hold, yes. hold a little bit back yeah. just to save yeah. for later. <laughs> yeah. 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 And to make yeah. them go, huh, I wonder, I wonder what, 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 what more is about that, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like, what's the deal with like, obviously something's going on with her and her dad or something. What's yeah. the deal with that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's a, 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 one of my favorite books, mm -hmm. but I say this, I'm not sure how well it ages. Let's just mm -hmm. put it that way. But it's, it is one of my favorite books is, um, Oh, shoot. God, I have not forgotten it now. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, my brain is just <laughs> Is gone. this the Susan Elizabeth Phillips Yes, book? it is the Susan Elizabeth Phillips book. Natural Born Charmer. Gosh, y'all. Go. Anyway, but she, yeah, there's this thing with her mom. And you, we don't find out about it until a good fourth of the way into the book. Maybe mm -hmm. even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That what's happened. And you're like oh okay I see why this is a big problem you know and why you don't trust people and yeah right. so and why you you know are hiding this from people and so mm -hmm. the way she she teased that out was so great mm -hmm. um yeah like I said some of some of the stuff doesn't age well mm -hmm. uh but the storytelling is still really good in some of some of those books as far as you know not not telling everything at the beginning exactly yeah yeah well if somebody's kind of new to tropes or new to thinking about tropes what um tips or ideas could you give for like to help people maybe recognize them and like should we just start looking for them everywhere <laughs> I'm gonna keep a list i mean i'm a list maker yeah. so <laughs> yeah and um, yeah Go ahead. Oh, my, I would say, um, whatever I would, I would, me, I would take my favorite book or movie and I would read through it or watch it and think about what kind of tropes there are. And, you know, there's trope li lists everywhere. So you mm -hmm. can, you know, read that over beforehand. Um, or, you know, you don't have to like, it doesn't have to be super academic unless, right. you, right. you know, right. you don't have to sit with a notebook and like write all this stuff down, but as you're watching it, um, because you know the story and you love it, try to think about like what the blocks are of it that are putting it together. Like what are the pieces of that character, you know, the, those different tropes. And then what are the pieces of the relationships? And then what are the pieces of the secrets? And, um, and, it, and it doesn't even have to be like, if you want to watch a mystery, you can do the same thing. It doesn't have to just be a romance. But um, I think to try to do something that you like and that you're familiar with and that you admire is a good way to get started to yeah. do it. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then just to kind of, I mean, for me, it's fun. <laughs> 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 I do it all the time. Um, much to my family's annoyance, probably, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. but, it, but it, there'll be some things that'll be like much e easier than others. Like say, if you're really new to starting out uh, and you're worried about how you're going to figure out what these are, then let's start with something like the Hallmark channel or one of the Netflix yeah. romances, yeah. because those are pretty straightforward. And then <laughs> they're, gonna... they're, they're trope 101. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then take like, you know, something that you really like, um, like one that's fun twist on tropes is the lost city that came out with Sandra Bullock and mm -hmm. Annie Tatum. And yeah. so that uses tropes, but they're kind of, she's kind of, or that, that author uh, has played with them a little bit. So yeah. like the kind of things you expect she twists. So that's, that's a really kind of fun way to look on it, um, to look at them also. And that, you know, in new and newer things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. One thing I've noticed that is if like, if you're like, if you're tired of a trope or you're um, you know, like, Oh, I've seen that trope so much, you know, if, as a writer, you're like, I'm so tired of that. If you, we talk about like twisting a trope or yeah. putting your own spin on it, and I think one way to do that is you take something and you put it in a new setting or in that people haven't seen before. Yeah. And, um, I can't remember who gave this example, but they use the example of bridesmaids, like the, mm -hmm. like the, you hadn't seen that type of comedy mm -hmm. with women at women. a wedding, you know, yeah. and especially yeah. with just women. And I was like, okay, yeah. so that's interesting. So we can think yeah. about like how we can take something that's very yeah. familiar. Right. Yeah. 
and do with a new type of character or a new setting, you know, yeah, yeah just to kind of and, keep it fresh. Absolutely. And the one that I didn't realize until I was working on the book, but was like, I think a genius example of this was the 40 year old virgin, mm-hmm. which is like 15 or 20 years old now, but it's yeah. like, you took a guy and flopped yeah. it. And yeah. and, you still, and it was like, there was so much in that, mm-hmm. that was, um, that made it, that elevated it way above what, you know, kind of like a raunch, like if it had been, you know, a straight up trope, it would have been kind of like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah. without twisting it, but it was like, well, somebody in the Hollywood studios figured out that that was going to be a great way to twist, twist yeah. that trope. Yeah. Yeah. So what advice would you give authors for how to intentionally incorporate tropes into their books? Yeah. Um, I think it's really important when you're using tropes to use them with goal, motivation and conflict to kind mm-hmm. of pair mm-hmm. the two together because it's a way to make it more specific. So you're going to try to figure out what, you know, the character wants in a, in a tangible way. And the thing that when I first start working with um, romance authors that always like, I know they're like, is um, for goal. (laughs) It can't be that, you know, Mary wants to be with Jack because we already know that that's what romance is like given. So she needs to have some tangible things she wants, like a promotion or, you know, bake a cake successfully, or, I mean, Mm -hmm. that's silly, but, you know, and then he also needs to have a tangible goal and having those two come in conflict is really what's going to push your story through. And then you don't get to like the halfway point and realize, Oh, I don't really have enough juice on this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a novella suddenly. Okay, I'm feeling very attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the thing with what you're trying to do with tropes is, is provide conflict. And the more that we can pack our stories full of conflict, the the better the whole experience is going to go, you know, for us, obviously mm-hmm. as authors, but also for the for the readers. Mm-hmm. And so that's the way I view them as like these building blocks that we can use to help us get from, you know, the beginning to the end and have things happen in the middle that, that keep us all engaged. Right. right. Yeah. That's what so, keeps us hooked mm-hmm. in is that mm-hmm. conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So just trying to work with them kind of specifically, like what's the goal and make it meaningful and measurable. And then I think with motivation, like, you know, what is the kind of feeling this is, this is engendering. And yes. then the biggest thing is working hard on those two things so that when you come to conflict, you're like, oh yeah, this is going to make it hard. It's already there almost. Yeah. 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 So even That's though great. it's kind of like a pain to work on that stuff, mm-hmm. um, I feel like it's worth the time. Because right. then when off. you sit down to work, you're not like, what do I do next? Because that's yeah. such an awful feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's terrible feeling. Yeah. And yeah. I think, and I think when you look at, I think mostly of like television shows as or mm-hmm. as opposed to books, but like shows like Castle, which mm-hmm. was great. The, the majority of their conflict was sexual. I mean, you know, he <laughs> wasn't a rule follower, you know, she oh. was. And so oh. that was there. But they built a lot of the conflict around the their their relationship and their yeah. sexual content, Absolutely. and so when they got together, that mm-hmm. show lost some juice. So right. you really need the mm-hmm. conflict to be more than just they want to be together, can't be together, don't think they yeah. can be together. It yeah. needs to be more, and yeah. uh, or you will lose juice. And I think that's yeah. that's so yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. And to think of it as like, you know, external and internal, like, I feel like it's, that's the, when you write romantic suspense, it's easier to see like external in terms of like crime or, Mm -hmm. you know, things, but, but still to think about it in, um, in terms of other kinds of subgenres and romance, like, uh, I think this book has aged pretty well. I was thinking about it recently, but now that you said the Susan Elizabeth Phillips is Jennifer Cruzy's Bet Me. Oh, I love that book. It's so, (laughs) so good. And there's nothing, I mean, it's, I, I feel like it'd be a great book to like talk about, you know, yeah. in a, because it's just, she does, but it's all conflict, 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 but it's not like explosions and kidnappings. It's all interpersonal conflict. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I feel like that's kind of, you know, if you're wondering how to use tropes, because right. she's got a ton of them in there and how to make them specific to the story. I feel like go get that book or listen yeah. to the yeah. book yeah, um, because it's really got great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. Good advice. Uh Um, um, So we do want to talk about your Kickstarter. So you've got Kickstarter running right now. It's going great. Yeah. So tell us about how that came about. 
Um, I had, I'd been hearing kick, you know, hearing Kickstarter, but not really knowing what that was really in terms of how that works as a creative person. And, um, I was at 20 books and that's where I got to meet Jamie and I went to some talks about it. And when I was there, I was thinking, I bet I could do this with the trope thesaurus romance, but I wasn't really sure how. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I spent basically the last couple of months learning that, (laughs) (laughs) which, uh, is a really big, it's just like a whole other way to think because Mm -hmm. basically what you're doing, um, for for Kickstarter, just a general thing is you're selling your book or presenting your creative project directly to people. Mm -hmm. So, um, you're not going through Amazon or, or Barnes and Nobles or anything. It's like you and them having this conversation. So it's, been really cool actually Mm -hmm. to to be able to do that without having to so much like worry about oh keywords or (laughs) other and you and you can kind of like you know just communicate with them um directly Mm -hmm. and I've enjoyed that more than I thought I I wasn't sure kind of how that would go Mm -hmm. um it takes a lot of time because it's you're learning this kind of new way to do things Mm -hmm. but so far it's been really fun and interesting to just see oh there's other options out there besides the kind of new traditional format Mm -hmm. setup of of working with these other wide retailers right right um, so yeah so what you do is you set up a campaign for a, a duration of time and you have your product and then people um can buy different amounts of it. Like you can start with just an ebook and go up all the way up to like courses and different, like uh, audio prints or audio versions or print versions and all that. So it's like they can buy in a tier. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really also kind of cool too, because like there's projects I can support. I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting, but I don't know a lot of it. So I'm just going to get like a smaller version of it. And then there's um, another one that I really like uh, Claire Taylor's done a, like a, a space opera kind of thing. And so I was like, yes, oh, I, I need all three of those books. Like, yes. now. So- yeah, <laughs> it looks so fun. It's such does. a fun book. Yeah. 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 Series, so yeah. Like, yeah. So I was, so, yeah, so I was like, oh yeah, I, I need those. So there's, um, so just, it's, it's pretty cool. Like mm-hmm. I'm glad that I have gotten into that world to, yeah. to figure out what's going on. Cause I hadn't been paying very well attention to it right. before. Yeah, so let's clarify is. real quick. Uh, so you have the Tropes Thesaurus yes. out. Yes. Then you have the Trope Thesaurus Horror. Yes. That's out. Oh, wow. And yes. what you're doing on Kickstarter is the Trope Thesaurus Romance. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and I have it all done. Um, but what is really nice is like I'm doing the audiobook version of it. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm doing a companion workbook. Um, so those are like things that I can do fold into this Kickstarter, uh-huh. which is really kind of neat as opposed to like if I was trying to do them on a retailer and having to like space them out separately yes worried about time you know all the Mm -hmm. things like trying to yeah 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 (laughs) yeah I hope that's a a, it's um it it sounds I thought it sounded a lot more confusing than it was until Mm -hmm. I got into it and like oh okay it's not that confusing (laughs) right right are you happy with the way it's gone going Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I really, yeah. People have been excited, which is great, which makes like me more excited because I put mm-hmm. all that work into it. <laughs> and like I said, it's, it's really sh- nicely streamlined. Mm-hmm. So you're not like having to jump through lots of hoops right. to, to do the different things, which is right. nice. None of us need like more steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so give so give us the details on it's when this episode airs, your Kickstarter mm-hmm. will still be running, but um, how long does it go? When is, when does it end? It ends on the 26th, um, at like six o'clock. And, um, so yeah, so this, this episode, if you listen to this episode that week, it will still be live yes. but Then in the future. Like if you're listening in the future, the yep. book will be available on yes. retailers and stuff, right? Eventually. Yes. Probably like later in summer. Yeah. Um, okay kind yeah. of figured that part out yet but yes eventually um and i was also trying to think of like okay so how do i, I want to be able to also do it on my website so i gotta like think yeah. about yeah. that yeah. stuff too yeah. so but yeah yeah it's a whole That's new a- way of uh it is, it, is. Like, it keeps it we're coming back to what you talked about in the beginning like about connecting and yeah. you know mm-hmm. getting to know your readers and yeah. so it, it gives you a, a very direct connection with them which is yeah. great 
Yeah. Have you, do you think you've found new readers? I do. Yeah. yeah. Which is really surprising and nice. Yeah. Yeah. And um, exciting. And it's just neat to like be able to communicate with them directly. Where like you know when I work with the other retailers, or as you guys know, you're like, oh, they'll maybe send out a pre order thing, and you mm-hmm. know you don't really kind of know a whole lot mm-hmm. what's happening. Um, and this way, it's more immediate, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have any um, tips or advice for authors who are thinking of doing maybe a nonfiction book or even a fiction book? Like, yeah. it, would you recommend starting it on Kickstarter? I would, because it's like really interesting to see all the different um, things that are going on on there. Like people will use it to like kind of test an earlier version of Mm -hmm. something and then you could like finesse it for uh, later. I think um, I think with nonfiction, it's good to really have a specific idea or platform and Mm -hmm. like who is your specific audience instead mm-hmm. of trying to be kind of like too general. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be like the biggest, the biggest thing I, I see about that. And then the other thing is for fiction, I would, I would also, again, do like three things in a series or three uh, books that are somehow tied together, because mm-hmm. it seems like that's just going to give people a better idea of you as an author and what right. you're excited about. So. Right. Are, and you can are, offer more. I mean, you can yeah. you can give more value, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Nonfiction, you can give value with the with the information you're giving. I feel like with fiction, you need more content to give more value. And right. I don't want to have to create content after the fact. Yeah. Uh, exactly. yeah. 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 I'm really glad that I have this book done when I'm doing this. There, yeah. you know, you don't have to. There are people that can run a campaign, and if it's not funded, then they won't do the project. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's funded, then you're obligated to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't recommend doing one without it being done. If that makes yeah, sense. especially your first one, I yeah. would think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I I think it's a really neat thing. um, And I hope like more of us give it a try and and, Mm -hmm. and explore it because there's this things are always changing. And um, I think we learned anything from what happened with traditional publishing. It's like nothing stays the same. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to be thinking, okay, what are other ways Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can Mm -hmm. be readers? Yeah. 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 I think that's awesome. Very good. Very good. So what's the best thing you think you've done to set yourself up for success? Not give up. Ah, Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I think that's like staying, you know, not giving up is in, in that applies to a lot of things in life, but you just have to keep going. And if something, it it is true that the more life experience you get, you see this, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. if something looks like a failure, there's uh, there's always things that you have learned in it. Not that it feels mm-hmm. good. Not that you mm-hmm. were like, I'm happy that that didn't work out in that way right. I want. But there's usually something down the road that you realize, oh, oh, I yeah. get it. You know, mm-hmm. um, learn from that. So I, I think to not give up and think like, okay, I've, I've written these books and I've gone out and I haven't become, you know, like in the top X of, of Amazon. I'm not a good, I'm not a good writer. I'm going to give up. Mm-hmm. Um, then... I don't think that is a accurate reflection of, mm-hmm. of you or your talent. It's just, there's a lot of other things going on and get back and, and write another book mm-hmm. because then you'll have this backlist, which mm-hmm. is also a huge thing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Great, great answer. Great answer. Yeah. Well, we, this has been awesome. Thank you for being yeah. here. Well, we really appreciate it. Uh, you gave good us fun. some really good information and good well, things good. to think about. Well, good. Oh yeah. Super yeah. fun to visit with you ladies. Yeah. So tell us where we, where people can find your books and your Kickstarter. Oh yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, My website at www.jenniferhilt.com would be the best. There's my Kickstarter stuff on there and my books and that would be the best best way to track me down. Okay. That's great. All right. We will have, we'll have all those links on wish I'd known then uh, podcast.com. And thanks for being our guest today. Thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the podcast and to Adriel Wiggins for doing all the admin. We'll see everybody next week. Bye.
Jamie and I are so glad you've joined us year in and year out to talk about writing and publishing. If you've gotten value from the podcast and you'd like to return the favor, you can show your support by becoming a subscriber. We'll give you a shout out on a future episode. Go to wishidknownforwriters.com slash support to learn more.